Hey everybody, I'm Bob from Black Arrow Gaming, and welcome back to my fifth Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy Series. Got uh, a few things to go over here, and I am also going to... Well, actually, I'm going to get this battle started here pretty quickly. I actually want to think about which tile they're on. I don't have a whole lot of units that benefit from... I don't have any units except for the Halfling that benefit uh, morale from forest tiles, so... I'll just attack from this tile here to save some movement, instead of wandering into the forest. Um few comments to go through right at the beginning of this episode. Actually, I wanted to start off by saying a big thank you to everyone, um, just throughout the history of my channel in general, uh, but with more people commenting on my videos now, uh, just a big huge thanks to everyone for having respect for each other's opinions in the comments, even when you disagree. Um, I really appreciate how everyone's done a great job keeping it classy. The internet can be like a really toxic place, and I really honestly haven't seen that on my channel like all you guys are really good at just talking things out you give informed opinions you have good discussions in the comments but everybody keeps it uh, polite and respectful to each other i just wanted to tell you all how much that means to me i really appreciate that a lot more than you so i just wanted to throw that out there and say a big thank you to you guys uh first comment for this week comes from tarsac and red Marut, which both pointed out that the sage hut I ran into down here. So we were talking about the Sage Huts a little bit in the last episode, and I was confused when I stepped on it with a goblin and didn't get goblin race governance XP. That's because Sage Huts give XP for your starting race. You can actually see that if you just click on this. Well, actually, okay, it doesn't tell it here. Visiting units receive race governance XP. But uh, if you look this up on the wiki, Sage Huts actually just give XP for your starting race. So for me, no matter what Sage Hut I go into, it's always going to give me Orc Race Governance, which is not nearly as useful as Goblins for me right now, unfortunately. But that is okay. Just a correction there. I was not the only... I mean, it, w it wasn't just Tarsac, because I, I mentioned his comment in the last episode, but it wasn't just him. It was me. It was several other people. There were a bunch of us who were confused as to how that worked or didn't really understand it, so we all kind of looked it up last week. But uh, thanks for making that correction. Um, let's see. Tarsac had also mentioned, he was the one who mentioned building a tower near the Northeast Bridge, which I will probably have this builder that's in this stack do eventually after he builds a fort here and here. Um, I think that's a good idea. Give me some much needed uh, uh, visibility over a strategic choke point there. Um, also, in terms of min-maxing XP, uh, Tarsac suggested uh, both raising corpse as often as possible, which I haven't been doing much, and also uh, taking intentional damage to heal after battles. Um, that's something that I could be doing with my army down here. Uh, they have so much heal. Well, actually, all my armies really have so much healing. I could actually, if a unit is, if there's like one unit left on the battlefield, and you haven't used healing on, say, my Orc Priest, I could have my Black Knight run back and forth in front of that unit, take some hits, use up its action points, make sure it doesn't have Tireless before you do this, and then heal it with the Orc Priest just to get... A little bit of extra XP for him. So you can min-max it that way. I don't always do that because I do try to keep things kind of moving at a decent pace on my channel, but he did point out I'm calling this an advanced strategy series, so I should probably at least point out these tactics to people, even if I'm not always using them on screen. Uh, Blurry Inner Vision uh, pointed out that the builder I forgot with this army kind of needs to be with them anyway because I wouldn't want to send him north by himself, so I don't feel quite as bad about bringing him on this little crusade down here to clear the gold mine. Um, he's right, because if I sent him north by himself, the animals that spawned in this eldritch, eldritch pit there would have eaten him up. And, uh, let's see, last comments come from Sarah Feingold, who, uh, correctly pointed out that I should have gone after this magic library underground. Getting a free spell right now would be fantastic. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, and I could, in, in part because I w I've been trying to get terraform. Um, and I keep researching strategic spells and not getting it. That being said, though, this leads into the next comment, also from Sarah Feingold, who suggested consider uh, said uh, consider seek inspiration. Um, I had a look, and I can actually cast that in one turn with 80 casting points. I was originally thinking I wasn't going to do that, um, but in retrospect, since it only takes one turn, I think I will. Arch Redbeard and Tarsac both uh, advised me, though, before I do that, to start research in Storm Magic. 
because I don't want that one to disappear. I want Storm Magic as soon as I can get it. It's just I kind of want Terraform a little more for growth right now. So what I'm going to do is take one turn researching Storm Magic. On this turn, I will spend a little bit of uh, mana getting a spell ready to cast, probably Beacon of Faith. And then on the next turn, I can cast Inspiration, except I can't. Oh, well, actually, I don't know if Beacon of Faith is going to do me any good if I get it ready to cast on this turn, because there's no, that city can't have it. I have it on pretty much all the cities that need it right now, um, that I can, and I don't need it on my capital anymore. I might actually not, yeah, I can't really cast Beacon of Faith on anything else at the moment. I just need to use my 40 casting points on something else. I might just summon another Cherub. I imagine the computers are going to find me pretty soon, and once they do, I'm going to want to get an, or get over to their side of the map and explore as fast as I can. So I think at the end of this turn I will do that. But I just want one turn of research into Storm Magic so that doesn't appear when I cast Seek Inspiration on the next turn. All right, that all being said, let's go ahead and get some more XP for my, uh, my sorcerer here. Uh, hopefully. Okay, that's the uh, devil's a cost of spells from everyone but the caster. <clears throat> Excuse me, but the caster. So, uh, fortunately, I don't really need. Well, I kind of want her to be using spells, but has she? Oh, she's still all got all her channeling points for this turn. So we'll. we'll... Let's see here. He doesn't have any... I always think these guys have physical protection, but they don't. It's just 100% shock. But these guys, I know, have physical protection. So do they. Let's see here. What can I... What's the best thing I can do? I'm going to pull back a bit. I want her in the back, protected by other units. Because I don't want... The wisp stunning the sorcerer. That would kind of suck. You go there. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm like on the edge of the map here. I'm going to have her cast star blades. Even though it's costing me double. Uh, I don't. I don't mind. I'll give it to the knight. I still want to use her. I, I, the whole point is to get her XP right now. So. All right, good. Nobody got stunned. I think the Ice Queen froze that thing. You can't tell hardly because it's blue, but yeah, she did. That's kind of convenient. I was actually kind of... I would prefer that the Ice Queen be the one going after the Phantasm Warrior anyway, so we'll do that. That'll be frozen for... It'll unfreeze next turn. Actually, I need to do something about that thing because it will unfreeze next turn, but because it attacked me on my turn? Or no, it attacked me on their turn. So on their next turn, it'll become unfrozen, and I don't want that, so. Knight already has star blades. I'm gonna have the knight go kill it. The knight should be able to take it out in two hits. There we go. Go ahead and engage that guy. If the sorcerer could stun one of these apprentices, that would be ideal. Uh, the only thing flyers can attack is that, so I'll do that. Unfortunately, I did not get the stun. I might try to use up some of their movement, although I actually don't have enough to do that either. All right, what I will do is go ahead, run up here, and defend. All right, well, the best she's going to do is get a kill on that apprentice. So I guess that's what I'm going to do. Um, I could, I could use her harmonizing energy and leave kind of like everybody on defense. I'm going to do that. I'm going to use up, I know this is, I'm, I've been a little tight on mana, 
but I'm getting enough now that I'm okay with doing this. Have that heal itself. Turn her around and use Harmonizing Energy on a Shock Trooper, who will, I will pull back. I can also use Star Blades one more time. Yeah, hopefully get a stun there. Well, I don't know if she leveled up at all. Basically gave her as much XP as possible, but she didn't even gain a full level. That's actually kind of unfortunate. Hmm. Yeah. Sun Shield is okay. I wish you could look at... I wish I could look at my unit's items right now before making this decision. The extra mana would be nice and would offset what I just spent, but I'll also kind of take gold wherever I can get it. And although it's plus two defense and plus two resistance to not flanking, non-flanking attacks, I guess the 60% fire protection is still good though. I'll take that. I just don't remember what other items my people had. See, that's plus two defense all around and 80% frost protection, so I kind of like that better for him. It's probably better than what the Necromancer is carrying, so I'll send it his way. She needs to keep that uh, Quiver of Razor Leaves. I like that. Okay. I can go see what's in the tomb. It just occurred to me that I should have probably saved some casting points for this. But by the time everybody gets over there, I guess they'll be out of movement, so I could just wait until the next turn anyway. No Dread Reapers. Okay, I can handle that. But I will do so on the next turn. Alright, I was trying to sneak another Cherub Pass that got cut off by dragons. Or by undead stuff. I'm sending him back to that cave entrance. I'm assuming there's nothing cool over there. It looks like just water. So this guy's on his way back. I think I've already gone down here. I might have him actually go underground a bit. There's a lot... I, I actually really do need to explore underground with these guys more. There's a lot I haven't explored. I think I'll follow that lava river across. Uh, I was building a road with this guy. So... I'll just go all the way to the cave entrance. And connect it down here. There we go, and now I'm kind of connected to the underground. That's where the Sorcerer's Army is going next, I suppose. The easier I can make it for them to get around, the better. Well, actually, before I send him back, I wonder if there's anything else he could do down here. That will... the Haunted Boneyard units will go further, I think, than 14 tiles. It's probably not really safe for me to build a tower just yet. I think I'll send him back up until the Sorcerer's Army can get down here to help out. Uh, oh good, right, I get gold. It's not quite enough to get me over that thousand cap, but... or threshold. There's a Naga city that I'll most likely declare war on. Uh, this guy's more or less out of movement for this turn, so we'll leave him there, and that is the end of my turn. I still have to see what that item is that I got from Master Smith. That guy's going to pick it up on the next turn. And in the meantime, I am going to summon one more Cherub. Uh, this guy I will summon by the Giants and send him out to start exploring this area. Since I wasn't able to get the other one past the Dragons, I can actually get that Haste Berries and boost straight over here. I'm probably going to meet enemy scouts soon, I would imagine. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and I'll cast Seek Inspiration on the next turn. Alright, that oh, that's right, that's the one I was sending back. 
I'm just glad there's not a Dread Reaper in this structure, because I would have reconsidered the entire battle if there was. Again, I have it set on strong defenders as opposed to very strong. If it was very strong defenders, there probably would have been a Dread Reaper in here. And that's something that terrifies any army, or any of my, terrifies me to fight with any of my armies until the point that I have, like, Blood Brothers or some way of getting 100% spirit resist on everybody. Alternatively, there are structures scattered along the map called Runestones of Cold Fury. I like to use those to clear Lich Castles and any, any place that has Dread Reapers whenever I can. I'm trying to think about, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen one on this map somewhere. Um, but yeah, those are a great tool to use before going into a Lich King Castle, because those give you, among other buffs, 100% spirit resistance for your next battle. They're absolutely amazing. The thing is, they disappear after being used once, so can't reuse them. You want to use them strategically when you have the opportunity. These two, that ziggurat and this sphinx temple, I want those cleared so badly. But I feel like I need her with Chaos Rift before I can reliably do that. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, I might be able to run away from this. I'm gonna try. Those are fast. That nightmare is fast, though. I don't know if I can. I'm trying to think of somewhere. And there's not really enough rocks to give them the run around. I think the trick is just gonna be flying is around in a... Trying to lure them to go around like this, probably. That one's probably going to shortcut through here. If I go slightly more this way, I think I can convince this one to go through here, and then maybe I can cut south and outrun it. I uh, might not be able to outrun these at all, though. Yeah, they're going to corner me. I don't think I can get away from this. See, this is a situation... Oh, I, yeah, that thing's... Like I said, those things have range. Well, this sucks. They just rocket off into the sky. Well, that guy lasted for a whopping less than one turn. That was a very short-lived cherub, unfortunately. trying to think about who I'm going to use to take care of this human city. That's another place the Sorcerer's Army could go to. Okay. Received a proposal from the city of Frostmere. I decline. I will not have your friendship. Uh. Alright, I think I'm going to go ahead and get this battle done now. And I've got... I'll cast Seek Inspiration at the end of the turn. Oh, this became very... Oh, because the Draconian Flyer healed up the rest of the way. Okay, this should be another good opportunity to get some good XP on the Sorcerer. Oh, good, they didn't attack, which gives me time to sit here and have her buff everybody. Which is probably something I should do in this battle anyway. Alright, I'm going to start moving people up. I'll keep the flyer in the back because he can fly over anybody and flank as needed. Should have maybe taken one more turn before moving up. I wasn't sure if they'd come after me or not. Well, there's still time to cast spells, though. Alright, uh... Should maybe be able to stun him. It's okay, outright killing him is fine too. I've got to be close to level 11. 693, I'm getting there. Uh, if I could have her kill, like, as many of these as possible. The Frost, the Deathbringers have Tireless, though. Um, I was thinking about using up action points, but I can't do that to them. Does that guy have killing momentum yet? No, that comes at elite rank. could smush that Deathbringer into a paste, though. I 
All right, let's take out a few more units just for safety's sake. I'm gonna use him for this. Now I'm gonna need to heal him. I'll take that hit, that's fine. Unfortunately he's gonna take some damage from the from the cold. Can't really do much about that. I wanna make sure that guy dies. And then with the flyer, I'll probably just harass the warg to take a little bit of damage off the shock trooper. Huh, you know what I'll do? I'll just park right here. Unfortunately, I'm exposing some of my own units to the cold, but... Oh right, those guys come back. I was a little worried about my shock trooper there. Those can... I forgot the Hellhound would come back. Alright, he still needs some massive healing. I think I will just have the Sorcerer do that. <coughs> I'm just not sure. Maybe I can have her do that at the end of the battle. Um, that is my Flyer. I'm gonna need to... Who's left? Just the Lost Soul. The Reanimator. And the Hound. Wondering if I could stun the reanimator. Well, I can't even hit the reanimator. I need to get him away from the reanimator. That's part of my problem. All right, I'm gonna do this. Back him away. He is cool cursed. That doesn't matter though. I will let the ice queen handle that. And the flyer can go just be a nuisance to him. In fact, the flyer can attack him because he'll probably heal himself. Um, no, he didn't. He must have already healed a different unit. Didn't quite play that right. Ah, and I didn't quite get her to the next level. Ooh. Ooh, a manticore mount. Oh, that's very nice. I will take that. Okay. Who is most deserving of the manticore mount? Oh, that's that's got Karzin written all over it. Okay, so wait, hang on. Let's actually look at what it does. So, flying, more resistance, inflict crippling wounds, and plus 5 hit points times 2. So, plus 10 hit points. Why doesn't it just say plus 10 hit points? I guess it's because plus 5 counts as one ability, sort of. Um, does Karzin already have inflict crippling wounds? I do not see it in there. So yes, Karzin just got a manticore. That guy is just getting all the good items. I love my warlords though. Warlord heroes are amazing. All right, well that wasn't didn't quite turn out how I wanted it. So the problem is now that, the problem is now I have to go underground uh, to deal with leveling her up more. I was hoping to get chaos surf before them but i think i'm still a couple levels away i'm not even really that close so underground it is and the cherub is going to beat them there as for this guy i don't know what to do with this builder i'm sure there's useful places for me to build watchtowers I, could, I don't really want to send him all the way north. I want to keep. keep I kind of want to keep him in the southern-ish regions uh, to help out with building things underground. Honestly, I think I think I'll just have him wait here. I'm sure there's going to be good places to build towers, and I can tunnel. 
underground for extra gold. Forgot about that. So I'm just going to keep him down here. He can hang out with the cherub for now. Right, let's see where that lava river takes us. To Lost Souls, apparently. I'm sure I'll run into more of those. Uh, I can't absorb you yet, but soon. The time is coming. All right, let's get a defender down there. I'm just gonna keep making these guys and spreading them out to all of my different cities. What happened to the other... Oh, right, the other cherub I sent underground. Okay, that was the one I was just controlling a moment ago. So, ease my way across the water. Again, trying not to get too carried away. I'm sort of just doing a line pattern up and down the map to prolong the amount of time before I meet the computers. I wouldn't be surprised if I met them within the next couple episodes, though. All right, let's drop the builder from that army and have him follow just behind everybody else. And let's see what item I got here in the city. Ooh, another fearsome amulet. Okay. That's identical to the one that he has. That's really good. Um, does the Necromancer get fearsome as a level up ability? I don't remember. Let me check that. Or see if I possibly already have it on my Necro. He doesn't have anything that gives it to him now. Because that might be a good choice for the Necromancer. <coughs> we can look it up here. Uh, we're going to go Necromancer, all levels. Is Fearsome in here anywhere? For some reason I thought it might be. A, B, C, D, E, F. Nope, it's not in there. Okay, I think I'm going to send that to him. It'd be either him or Ganon, because Ganon could do the melee combat too, but he's kind of, I'm, I'm treating him as more of a support role. So I guess that'll go to the Necro. Um, yeah, that'll work. Can get there in one turn too, because they're basically bite right below me. And, and from the overworld to the underworld, they're pretty close. So I guess I'm just digging a hole and dropping it down into the underground. <laughs> Uh, that priest is there on defense, so now my capital does officially have a defender, as does this city here. Better than nobody, I guess. I'll probably put two or three orc priests in my border cities, just to watch out for scouts. I'm also almost done with mercenary camp. Uh, I don't think there was anything else. Sort of tempted to build Dark Citadel there just to help. Martyrs evolve faster, but I think that'd be a mistake. I think I'm better off just producing them and letting them start getting XP now. I need one for each of my main armies. <coughs> Excuse me. Coughing a lot tonight. Uh, so what would come next then? I guess just making Martyrs would be next. I've already got the first Theocrat structure that I'd need for that. Building a wall probably isn't a bad idea, but... Uh, let me see here. I'm gonna... I still need to cast Seek Inspiration on this turn. But I could cast Embrace Darkness next turn. So I would still be able to start making Martyrs and get that out. Get Embrace Darkness out in time without slowing down any other casting that I'm currently doing. I almost sent that Settler the wrong way for no apparent reason whatsoever. Sent him to the correct structure. Okay, met the Naga. Uh, do I want to declare war on them? I probably do. Yeah, I'm only slightly evil. I don't really care about my relationship with the Naga, so prepare to be destroyed. I guess I'll keep going down. Exploring these rivers underground is a good way to get a little extra gold, if you can find those piles that are just floating in the water. Alright, so Ganon's army could take a detour to go after this. Instead, what I think they will do is go after the production resource and go straight after the city. Worry about the ancient ruins on the next turn. Unless I can get both on this turn. And I don't think that I quite can. 
Oh, uh, oh yeah, by the way, I'm going to war with you. Oh, no, decline. Sorry, guys, but uh, you need to be goblins. Speaking of goblins, before I start that fight, how long before... Okay, one turn left before they can join my empire. Good. Hopefully there's no structures nearby that are going to cause trouble for them. I wasn't thinking about it, but I should probably send some orc priests down there to help them out with defense too. Or have one of these armies, maybe have the Necromancer's army go hang out in that area, try to ghoul curse some stuff and build up a little bit. In fact, I can probably ghoul curse one of those Black Knights and add it to the Necro's army. Let's do that. Uh, who's got the most movement? The Big Beetle is probably the choice for launching battles if I want to save movement for the rest of my stacks. Alright, so... Top priority in this battle is Ghoul Curse. At least one Black Knight, possibly both of them, if I can get them. Uh, for starters, you want to start with trying to just regularly curse the Black Knight. Fortunately, they're orcs, so that's a little easier to do. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've got Curse. Alright, so I double cur curse both of them. Now I just need to get the Necro over there to fight them, or lure them to the Necro. Unfortunately, I left this guy up here defenseless by himself, and they'll probably go after him, so he may need a few guys to help him out. So instead, I'm just going to back up. Uh, could probably touch by faith on somebody for some easy XP. I will make that... Let's do the Goblin. Leave the Black Knights in front, and start circling these guys around. Oh good, he's coming right to the Necro. Well, that one is anyway. I think I got it. I'm pretty sure I got that. I saw the little skull flash up real fast. <coughs> um, I can reanimate that guy. Just a little extra XP for this guy. The reanimator's there. Um, I will probably disband that cadaver. I don't know that there's anything I really need to explore down here with it, and I don't really want to spend the extra XP or um, healing to maintain it. Although I could, just because I've got plenty of reanimators. Um, but I don't really, I don't really like to get one cadaver in the Necro army, just gold rank it and use it as a meat shield. I, I don't usually get more than that. Alright, anyway, uh, that guy's got pole arm, so I, what I want to do is lower his movement, but he's going to do a lot of damage to whatever he hits. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is this. I'm gonna come out here and pick on the razor bow. I'm gonna absolutely annihilate the razor bow. That works too. We'll take one hit for those guys. We can kind of mess up the great sword. And these black knights are really tough, so they should be able to handle this just fine. I'll heal them on the next turn. And that stops him in his tracks so the necro can get a shot at ghoul cursing him on the next turn. Or I could always just try converting him and, and incorporating him into Ganon's army too. But Ganon's kind of got... Ganon's sort of got stuff already. Ganon's army's okay. And he'll have opportunities to convert other things in the future. Since the Necro army's going off by itself, I think I want to ghoul curse the other Black Knight and just give the Necro army two Black Knights. All right, and then you can't really do much of anything. I guess you could heal undead on this guy. All right. Please work. That'd be great. Got him. All right, that's two Black Knights for the Necro. Uh, Draconian Flyer is going to wait. I need... Okay, I want to heal... I've used healing. Both of these guys have healing. So this is kind of what Tarsak was talking about 
what I can do here is just like this. Use up some movement. Ganon's actually got Bustow Iron Heart, so he can do some healing. I'll send him here for that. Just make sure I don't bestow Iron Heart. Oh wait, no, I didn't convert anything. It's just cool curses. All right, so this gives me an opportunity to use healing with Ganon, use healing with this guy, use healing with this guy, and so everybody gets XP. Um, could also heal undead if I wanted to do that. I'm, this guy, one of those two, still has the heal undead as an option. I'm not going to spend the time to do that right here, but uh, you kind of get the point of what he was saying. You can really squeeze a lot of extra, extra XP out of these battles. And I'm going to give, speaking of XP, I'm going to give some to that flyer. He needs to level up. All right, that is really cool. And I got, oh yes, that's actually awesome. Uh, the arenas give me extra gold because of my race governance. So I'll take a free arena. And now have... Wait, where's the other Black Knight? Oh no! Oh, I revived... I forgot that using... Oh crap. I forgot that using revive would turn him into a cadaver instead of a black knight. So that reanimator that revived the cadaver so I could just get some XP, I screwed that up. Oh, I'm sure some of you were screaming at your screen, screens when I did that. I forgot about that. The way cadavers work is so weird. For some reason, I was thinking I could get the cadaver and still get the black knight. That's not how it works. Crap. Okay. Well, I got one. I would have preferred to have two. Well, I'll find something else to go curse. Maybe I'll get lucky and there'll be a troll. Ooh, if there was a troll in that ancient ruins, I actually kind of want to go check that out now, but we'll uh, we'll get to that in a future battle. All right, well, I got one, so there's your army. Dang, I kind of screwed that up. All right, well, let's get these draconians. This is an absurdly very likely victory. <laughs> little bit overpowered for this. Alright, well I guess I just have two cadavers for this army now, but I've got two reanimators to keep everybody pieced together, so I guess it works. One of them might get replaced eventually, but you know, kicking myself over here for that. Completely, un completely avoidable. See, it's weird because the cadaver could have devoured, a cadaver could have devoured that corpse, and I'm pretty sure I would have still gotten the Black Knight. But I can't resurrect the corpse, then I don't get the Black Knight. If I, if that, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And if I'm right, it's just the rules surrounding that are just confusing and kind of hard to remember. I'm going to try to con to curse that guy. All right, we'll have the Necro curse. Well, the Necro already tried cursing. I want somebody, <clears throat> excuse me, I want somebody to deal with that flamer. Well, I guess he's not really afraid of fire, so I could do that and start breaking down the wall with the goblin. Make for some decent siege weapons, those guys do. I could try converting some of these units. I'm not a huge fan of any of them. I guess the raptor wouldn't be bad if I could get my hands on it, but I'm not really making good friends with the draconians, so... I'll probably try, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, eh, oh well. Or I could try ghoul cursing that raptor. Or 
or the raptor is just going to run headfirst into the polearm on the black knight and get annihilated. I guess that's an option too. Alright, I will take the hit from that guy if it means harassing them. And all that's left is a crusher. In my opinion, not really worth it. Let's get some healing for the- oh, undead healing for that guy. Who else can do anything, really? I was looking for somebody to- well, we'll just see what the Crusher does. I might be able to uh, squeeze a little more XP out of him, too. Nope, he's gonna get one shot by the by the goblins. Okay, it's all good. All right, well, I got this city finally. <clears throat> I cannot migrate it to goblins yet. As a matter of fact, what I'm gonna do, I can't migrate it to goblins until I can buy the goblins on the next turn. So what I'm going to do instead is start absorbing it and then cancel that on the next turn. I got to remember to do that. All right, up next, I want to see what's in that. Because if there's a troll in there, I'm going to practically jump for joy here. There is. All right. Okay, that's getting ghoul cursed if I have anything to say about it. <clears throat> now, does the trolls... Here's a question I don't actually know. The trolls regeneration ability, does that still work as an undead? Or does he lose that? I honestly don't know. So I'm kind of sitting here wondering, should I try to ghoul curse it or should I try to convert it? I guess I could try both and just use whichever works. Ganon's going to go back up there. I want my good Black Knight for this battle. Uh, who else? Going to need more curses, so bring him. And... Let's take... Goblin Reanimator can weaken, right? No, it's just inflict curse at gold rank. He doesn't have... For some reason, I was thinking they had weaken. Maybe not. Eh. Guess I'm wrong about that. Uh, the last person I'm going to give to the High Elf Reanimator, I wouldn't mind him. Oh wait, he can't quite reach. That's fine. I guess it's the Flyer that's going to come along then. Alright, so if I can avoid getting webbed by all those nasty spiders, hopefully I can find a way to get that troll on my team. Army's growing this this time around. Oh, I got it! That was only an 18% chance to work. I just got super lucky. That makes up for that other unit that I tried to convert with 95% chance and failed earlier. So I guess as far as the game and I are concerned, now we're even. I wouldn't mind if that flyer had a little more defense, so I'm going to give him Iron Heart. And... We'll go from there. See what they do. They're not going to do anything yet. The one thing that could screw this all up is if the spiders get some really lucky webs. So I'm going to probably try to kind of go after them first. He's got Bastar and Heart. We'll also give him Touch by Faith. Just absurdly buff him. <laughs> All right, they're gonna come this way. I don't mind that angle. He's running way around. I, I could even try ghoul cursing a spider baby too. That wouldn't be bad. There's so many options once you get into like ghoul curse. Uh, problem is, actually cursing them is gonna only be a 30% chance to succeed. But I don't see a reason not to try. All right, well that's fine. I'm gonna let the necro fight those guys. 
Now these guys also don't get killing momentum until gold rank, okay. How far can he run? I still might I still have a decent chance at ghoul cursing it. But I was not successful, unfortunately. So that ogre is gonna run in and might try to hurt fair in the wicked, so I need to make sure that I'm doing something about the rest of these spiders. Okay, good kill. And I would like somebody to deal with that warg so it doesn't flank him. Or I could just block him in with the big beetle. I think that's probably what I'll do. I'll stick the big beetle here. Run the Black Knight around. I'll have Ganon come over here. Give him some heals. I think that's all I can do. I want to leave that beetle on defense because it's going to take a hit from that troll. I think I'm good here. Okay, so now is when I need to try to make sure I get that troll before it kills itself. I need... I need this guy off of me. Actually, really need that guy off of me too. But if everything fails, I need a backup plan here. All right. I'm gonna go for. Oh man, the convert would be safer mm -hmm. though. It's hard to decide whether I want him as dead or alive. I think I'm going to try to convert him. That might be safer in this situation. If it fails... Okay, I, I'll just convert him and take him that way. That's fine. Now he could try to ghoul curse the other spider. That would work. Okay, I got that. I'd like to kill that spider now, but... Oh good, I got my priest down here. I almost forgot about him. He is just about dead. Did I actually... He's severely poisoned. He is dead. Okay. So now I've got that spider left, which is gonna... Not do anything, actually. Okay, so that spider's just gonna bleed out. Oh no, I can kill it with the troll. Yeah. Alright, cool. A couple more units there. These armies both just became quite a bit more powerful. I'm pretty happy with that. Long sort of dire penguin slaying. Uh, eesh. <laughs> That's not really a great melee weapon. It's okay, I guess, but I think I'm just gonna take the gold on that one. Yeah. I know I don't really need gold, but that's kind of a crappy sword. I can probably make better swords than that. The problem is I don't remember what everybody's carrying. Well, that would have been better for Ganon. And it would have been... Okay, so I actually didn't have... Yeah, that would have been better for a lot of people. That was a big mistake. Now, at least Karzen's got a sword. Ah, I should have just taken that. Oh, well. <sighs> That's the thing is you can't check the items when that prompt comes up, unless somebody knows a way to do that. If you do, let me know. I guess this spearman was probably headed this way to kind of help guard this city. So we'll do that. Um, and I've got, oh, I got a ghoul priest back there too. That's right, I forgot I picked him up as well. All right, so I think Farron's army is strong enough to function independently of Ganon's. He is going to go off on his own. Ganon is going to... Well, everybody's kind of 
stuck here until they can move elsewhere, so... I don't want people by themselves, though, because there's still Draconians down there. That's three raptors, and they're probably going to go after these guys. Okay, good. I can get Farron back down there. I'll, I'll get these guys all organized on the next turn, I think. There, that should be enough to handle those pesky guys, but we'll just buff it even more anyway, just in case. Alright, that looks good to me. Yeah, we'll organize everyone on the next turn. Siege workshop done, temple in, under construction. That is good. I'll go ahead and queue up something else to be done after that. Probably a laboratory. And I had my interactions with the independents. And now I want to go ahead and cast Seek Inspiration. Now that I've started Storm Magic. There's Terraform. All right, cool. And Storm Magic is still there. So... That is a good call, Sarah. That helped out a lot, thank you. And I will pick up Terraformer next. So I can start growing cities a little faster. And that's it for this turn. That was a very busy turn, but a good one, I think. A lot of pickups in tactical combat for new units. I'm really excited, especially about that ogre, or that, that troll. That's gonna make a fine addition to Ganon's army. And then, of course, I've got... So I've got my two reanimators. I'm probably going to end up dumping one of those cadavers because there's not really anything for him to go explore now. Oh, okay. So Farron's army is probably going to go down here. In fact, I might send both of them down here to clear this area because I want Ganon's army... No, actually, I want Farron's army down here for both of these because... This structure here... Oh, but Farron himself is not undead. That could be dangerous. Depending on what's in there. Unless there's a way for me to give him... Oh, but I got an item that gives strong will, I think. I think Ganon's actually holding one. Does he have one? No, but I'm making one. I'm making one in my capital. So I could give that to... Oh, here we go. Dealing with these guys. I'm making one in my capital, so we could give that to Gan to uh, the, the Necromancer, and he, and he could clear all that stuff, and maybe pick up a Bone Dragon at the Haunted Boneyard down there. And then Ganon can go back east and deal with stuff on the front line. That, I like that plan. I think that'll work. Alright, well, we have a battle to fight here, so let's get these guys up on the walls. And let's give Farron some healing. Oh, that's still broken, right. Okay. So, how about we put the guy with pole arm right here? Back, we'll get the put the guy with pole arm right there. That'll work. Draconians do not care for the cold. Uh, you can maybe get cool cursed. Nice. There's a draconian raptor on my side. Just gonna take him out. All right, cool. Oh, he ghoul cursed him too. Okay, well, there's two, two extra draconian raptors that I have now. See, at this point, I'm actually maybe no, I'm still taking 
plenty of gold per turn, so I guess I'll bring him along for now. Okay, what should Farron get next? I think Inflict Curse is a good one, because that gives me potentially three options to curse something while also inflicting despair, um, which really buffs his chance of cool cursing something, if there's something I really want. So I think I'm going to pick that one up. Inflict Curse is just good. Although I forget what the Necromancer gets at level 11. I want to check that before I, I make that decision. Level 11. Invoke Death, Necromancy 4, Necromantic Aura. That's a pretty good one. Scourge of Undead is also a really useful combat spell. Similar in function to kind of like summoning lots of things. Kind of works sort of like uh, Chaos Rift or um, whatever that one is that summons a bunch of animals. I can't remember off the top of my head for some reason. <coughs> There's Undying. I'm going to go ahead and get him in Flick Curse now anyway. I really want that. It won't do him a lot of good in these immediate upcoming battles, but any time he's fighting a non-undead unit, that could be pretty useful. Now I want to go ghoul curse the Shock Serpent, though. Or try to. The problem is I need Farron's army to pretty much do everything here. Oh, hey, before I forget, transform that to a destruction node. I think Ganon's just going to start heading back east now with his army. Farron's got a lot of mopping up to do around here, and I'm going to use him to try to get that snake, hopefully. He's also got that spider to work with. But I have a few more undead than he can really heal, so... My army's growing a little bit more. He's almost a victim of his own success here, I think, where he's going to be soon. Then again... I guess the more from the merrier now because there's I have the money to upkeep everything so I kind of may as well uh, that guy goes with him so I've got an extra reanimator kind of hanging out by himself that's actually not bad because he can keep that cadaver that extra cadaver alive for now and we can maybe heal the draconians too now for Ganon's group he's got his troll, he's got those guys. That guy definitely stays with Ganon. The Great Sword is probably just going to be an extra unit that I'll use somewhere else. So, Ganon's army is going to look like this now. And the Great Sword can follow them back out. On the way, I need to try to remember to stop at that magic library. It'd be absolutely incredible if I got storm magic out of that. I'm not sure whether that can happen or not. I don't see any reason why it couldn't, but I just don't think I've ever gotten quite that lucky before. All right, that works for now. There's another Lich Castle there too. Man, farron has got his work cut out for him around this city here. Okay, I can absorb this city now. Uh, do I want to wait for that? I mean, I could get another big beetle, which wouldn't be bad for Ganon's group. Hang on a second. So this city is going to be done absorbing population in three turns. It'll be two turns when I get there, and I can pick up the... On next turn it'll be two, but I can pick up haysberries and get about halfway there. The next turn it'll be one. I just want to cancel that, or I guess I could just cancel it and reset it. I guess I'll take this. I mean, it's a free big beetle, and Ganon's army is going to be doing a lot of work underground, I think. So, it's only a couple extra turns. I'll go ahead and do that. All right, mercenary camp is done here. Uh, oh, crap, but I can't... All right, I can't cast Embrace Darkness yet, because I used casting points on that uh, destruction node. But what I can do is go ahead and build a wall here. Since that's a border city, I should probably do that. As well as send another guy out that way.
Also, I'm not sure if completing quests, does that give you race governance? I don't know. It might give you a small amount, but I'm not really sure. It would make sense if it did. I'm practically rolling in money now. Oh good, that item's already done. Okay, that is going to the net. Wait, hang on a second. Does the Necromancer already have a strong will item? Because I thought I had one on somebody. Maybe I did give it to the Necro. It would make sense, but no, I did not. Then that is what he's going to get. That is a perfect item for him in this situation. Do I need to make another one? Because probably wouldn't be a bad thing if I gave one to the halfling as well. What did the item have? I think it had a uh, strong will and plus one vision range, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So... Let's make another one. I keep calling it strong will, it's just... Oh wait, no, actually I think it is strong will. It's not just 100% spirit protection. Yeah, it's strong will. So strong will, plus one vision range, and we'll call it another helmet of willpower. And I don't have enough mana to do that, so never mind. Um, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to generate mana in my capital on this turn. Get that reserve built up a little bit more. Oh good, and I've got that item for him, and I'll go ahead and put that one there so I don't forget to equip it later. And his sun shield comes next turn. Item will arrive in one turn, so I'll go ahead and put that on now. Can they move any further? Oh. I'm actually going to be able to do that battle on this turn, so I'll put that shield back on for the moment. This is uh, actually going to be maybe a little bit of a tough battle, just because that thing's spirit ray is going to hurt. Or doom gaze. Let's see what this says as far as my odds of success. Very likely victory, but I'm probably going to have to use some spells from the Necro to pull this off without losing anybody. At least his army's got protection from light, so that helps. I hate that thing. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is stiffen limbs, that stupid eyeball. It probably won't make a huge difference, but I'm hoping I can stay out of the range of its attacks for a little longer. Maybe just even one turn. Uh, I want to get rid of that, and the, I want to ghoul curse the snake. Alright, that worked out well. Get these guys joined up with everybody else. Now I can try to curse the snake. Okay, that worked. Gotten kind of lucky with the curses in this episode. Now I want the snake to attack the spider. just once. I don't think the spider's in too much danger otherwise, so... That'll lower the snake's guard, it'll give the spider a small amount of XP. I'm gonna want that person to heal the spider on the next combat round. Oh wait, I don't want- I want the spider to get hit. That- that'll work. It's a decent setup, I think. Ah, oh, crap. Oh, well, he didn't do that much damage. Okay, so he ran in, he got bit, now the spider can try to web. That didn't work, but that's okay. I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for a charge, for one thing. I got it. I saw it pop up for, like, a frame. I'm stunned, though, but that's all right. Now what can I do to kill that thing? I don't like that thing. I'm actually maybe not going to heal the spider. I'm going to try to despair it with this guy. That didn't work. 
What about poison infliction? Nope. They don't inflict poisoned. Or they don't yet. And it's noxious vulnerability. Oh, it is inflict severely poisoned also at gold rank. Okay. Okay, I got one despair off. Which makes him more vulnerable to... Not significantly so, but slightly more, vul more vulnerable to that. I want to put the cadaver in front to keep the goblin from targeting the spider too much. And you can go charge that thing, or cry, and hopefully kill it. Okay, he got stunned. That's actually maybe not good. But I can revive him if anything goes wrong, so it's all good. Oh yeah, he's not surviving that. That is A-OK. -okay. Because that's what this is for. Minions, attack. Or get stunned. Alright, let's just see what they do, or who they kill. Well, there's that cadaver, and that cadaver. I don't remember which one of those was a higher rank. I can only get one of them back. Oh wait, no, I could get both of them back. Alright, well first things first, I need to... take a hit from him. Charge him. I want to kill this one in the back. That leaves him with one action point. And pretty much leaves me with the ability to... Let's see, raise my cadaver. Oh wait, no, yeah, I got the shock. I do not want to raise corpse on that because it'll just turn it into a cadaver. All right, I want to raise the cadaver and then greater reanimate the other one. Because why not? Oh right, you can't heal the spider because it's undead. All right, that can shoot. That guy can shoot something once. He won't be able to kill it. Whatever he picks. All right, so I've got a few things I can do here. I'm sure I'm going to miss something in terms of gaining XP, but I know I want to. Greater reanimate undead on that cadaver. I want to heal that spider with a reanimator, so I guess that's this guy. I've already thrown a curse on him, but I could heal Farron with that guy. They could devour a corpse if I could move them on this turn, but. Probably, I can't do that, so I guess all that's left, and that's disappointing. Uh, can finish him with this guy, so it's all good. I think I wrapped up all the loose ends in that one. And I got my ghoul snake, so I can start leveling that guy up. That'll give a nice elemental option to this army. And the snake can't move though, so. But I'm actually I'm gonna stay here with the snake. I'm not gonna use up all their movement uh, on this particular. I'm not gonna use up all their movement right now on this particular turn. Uh, what I am gonna do is sort of shuffle things around a little. I'll give Farron the snake. He can have the spider. Probably needs one cadaver. You know, that's actually kind of how I want Farron's army to look. The cadaver babysitting's gonna have to fall to that guy, but he probably can't really keep them all alive, so for this particular turn, he's gonna have to babysit the spider. How much are those cadavers costing me? Oh, got public baths done. I'm gonna want the hospital after this, 
So I can't really queue that up. I'd like to, but uh, I can't, so. I become more evil, so that's good. Terraform is done, so I can actually start terraforming, and I'm going to need a lot of mana for that. In the meantime, I got a research boost, a small one, but that'll get me seafaring for basically free. A free turn there, and then I can move on into researching probably storm magic. Yeah, I think I'm going to start working on that. I actually probably am going to want that for that Lich King Castle battles. All of the Lich King Castle battles that are coming up. A lot explored down here. There's another mana pile over there. I really could use that. Alright. Don't want to go too far here. Just enough to explore more of the map. They are an independent. That's not a vassal of anybody. So that's good news. Also, they're goblins, so... I'll just click let me know when you're ready to talk and eventually accept it when they offer me peace. A little extra race governance for that. All right. Carson can head up north now. So I'll start building my economy in that area. <clears throat> and I can get the city built here. Excellent. Found a city. Right there. For some reason the porters look smaller, but it should actually be that big once it's done. I think I've gone a bit over for this episode. <laughs> I think it's like an hour and ten minutes. I actually probably need to wrap this up, but uh, I almost feel like, a, I almost feel like I'm going to want to marathon this on a Saturday and just do a whole bunch of episodes right in a row. Um, I don't, I'm not promising I'm going to do that, but I could see myself sitting down because I'm. This is honestly the most fun. I think this is the most fun game I've had playing on this channel yet. I'm just really into this one. So, uh, but I probably do need to wrap this up. So they're going to go underground on the next turn. Uh, let's let's pan out for a second. Let's look at the overworld map. So we've got kind of the southern portion of the overworld map. You can see up north here. Still didn't meet any computers, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if we run across each other in like either the probably one of the next two episodes is what I would guess. So there's the northern and then underground, the northern portion of the underground and the overworld port or the uh, southern portion of the underground, the overworld portion of the underground, right? Okay, so good episode, I think, uh, especially I think the highlight of this episode is probably getting that troll. I'm super stoked about Ganon having that. And with Divine Chest of Stars, that thing's going to be with me for the rest of the game. That's going to become a, an absurdly powerful troll. Um, and then, of course, the Necro's army is really shaping up, especially once these units get some evolutions, the Snake and the Spider. They're going to be really nice additions to that army. <coughs> um, and I think with regard to the Lich King Castle down here, I'm going to try to get Storm Magic so I can get Smite, uh, which I think will be helpful for that. I can kind of show off how good that really is with the Theocrat class. Um, but I don't know if I'll be able to get that before he gets down there or not. He is going to start heading that way now. So, um, But I do also have this bone dungeon to clear too. So I'll have a chance to get a bone dragon. Um, a lot of good things happening right now. I feel pretty good. So I could always get rushed out of nowhere and die horribly really quickly. But we're just going to hope that doesn't happen though. So uh, thanks so much for watching everybody. I appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next episode.